Good morning everyone and welcome to today's video. So today's video is another book review and today we are going to be reviewing A Page for Murder by Lauren Elliott. So without further ado, let's get started. A disclaimer that I have been provided this book free of charge by the publisher for the sole purpose of reading and reviewing this book for netgallery.com for my blog which is um, my blogger site which I will link in the description below and here on my YouTube channel. All reviews are completely my own thoughts and opinions. So just as an FYI this book is book five in the series so even if you have not read the other four, you, it's a standalone book. You just won't have as much care, won't have as much knowledge of the characters, but it's really not necessary for you to enjoy this book. So Addison Grayborn lives in Grayborn Harbor, which is a quaint New York town, or Addie to her friends. She is the owner of a bookstore and is getting ready for the big fire and ice event, which is after Christmas in their town. It's a fun after Christmas event where they have an ice carving competition. They have a bonfire where they burn everyone's Christmas trees because they're live trees. They have a midnight fireworks show. I'm sitting here reading this book and going, I, I want to jump into books anyway. But listening and reading, listening, reading this book and getting this mental image of this bonfire where, where people like the community has just brought in their truckloads and truckloads of these live trees to um, have make this big community bonfire made me want to jump into this book even more because I'm like, all I can see in my head is being bundled up with gloves and, you know, with Sam and, you know, hot chocolate and all those really good things to eat that aren't real good for us. And enjoying a community bonfire. I'm like, I want to be in this book. I want to go to this event. So, Addie has been outside with her assistant, Paige. And it's not, and it's spelled P-A-I-G-E, like the name, not the, like a page in the book. When she literally stumbles over Pippi, her friend Gloria's little dog. This is a really big problem, not because she doesn't like dogs, but because Gloria doesn't go anywhere without Pippi. Soon they find Gloria at the festival grounds injured, and before Addie has a chance to take a breath, she's dog sitting. And Addie is going, like, I, I don't have a dog. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, like, against dogs, but I'm not really a, hey, let's have a dog person. But thankfully, Pippi has just this beautiful little personality and just grows on Addie through the course of the book. It actually only takes a few chapters. Now, you can't have a holiday without some family drama. Now, Paige has a daughter, and her name is Emma. And Paige's daughter's father, Brett Palmer, has re-entered the picture, wanting custody and rights to see Emma after never really even being in their life to begin with. Um... No, <laughs> that, that's not for you to get to the side, dude. You can't just knock her up and um, forget you have a daughter for four years. Not, not really cool, dude. On top of that, Martha, who is Paige's mother and owns Martha's Bakery, her ex-husband has re-entered the picture as well. Well, let's just make this all kinds of family drama at the holidays, shall we? Um, and they are causing very public scenes um, during this time, which makes Martha and Paige very, very uncomfortable. So, Addie is in charge of Pippi and uh, things a couple days later and she goes into the, to the bookstore, because she's a bookstore owner, the morning of the bonfire and she sees who she thinks is Old Bill. Old Bill is a homeless man who we find out later in the book is a Vietnam vet and that is actually very um, common for Vietnam vets. My father is a Vietnam vet um, and they, let's just military now they get ticker tape parades they're thanked for their service uh vietnam vets are not vietnam vets are were and still kind of are treated like they're the scum of the earth and you know my having you know growing up witnessing that was not really cool um yes i am a late nest baby you know let's just you know <laughs> i'm 33 let's let's count back a little bit you know but even now you know 
my dad doesn't wear Vietnam hats like some of them do, and but he has his Vietnam tags. But I always think when I see a service member wearing a hat, this is Vietnam vet, Iraq vet, Desert Storm, whatever. I make a, I make, I have always made it a point to say thank you for their service. But ten times more to those who are Vietnam vets because we did not treat them well when they got home. They deserved better. Whether whatever your political beliefs were or are about that, they fought for your rights. They served their country. Sorry, I get a little heated. Back to the book review. Um, huddled up against, she finds old Bill huddled up against a heating vent. She goes over to talk to him, but it's not Bill. It's Brett Palmer, and he is very, very, very dead. Dun, dun. <laughs> so let's complicate things a little bit more, shall we? The chief of police is, has been involved with Addie in the past. They have a tenacious, strained relationship. And that's really at best. Simon, who is Addie's current beau, um, is the local doctor who is also the coroner. So she she's standing there witnessing everything going on and he walks by and whispers in her ear that she really needs to tell Mark, who is the chief of police, the um what Martha has said to her um uh, the previous day. She doesn't want to. She she's like I she's she's grappling with this in her in her head. He's like no, you really need to do it. So she Gets up her courage to tell Mark what Martha has said. After relaying that information, Mark Mark knows there's th this connection. Mark's father and Paige's father, Ken, which is Martha's ex-husband and Paige's father, they knew each other. They're, I mean, it's a small town. It's kind of like living here in Hillsborough. Everyone knows everybody else. And so you hate to be that person, but it's his job. He is the chief of police. Um, after getting the information, he relays to Jerry, who is another police officer on the scene, that he needs to go pick up Paige, Martha, and Ken for questioning. Poor Paige. Things just keep piling on to her. Things just seem like they can't get any worse. So, after leaving the scene, Addie needs a little bit of a break. So, she takes Pippi to the hospital, where she convinces the nurse that Pippi is an emotional support animal for Gloria, because Gloria lives alone. And she allows Addie to take Pippi in for a visit. And they have a very touching reunion. And I mean, insert hearts and rainbows. And I mean, I, kind of, I teared up when I was reading the book, because I know how I would feel if I was in the hospital, and you can see my baby right there, my kitty, my peaches. If I was in the hospital and I couldn't have peaches and somebody took the time to like convince them that I really needed peaches with me for a little bit. And I just know she would be so happy to see her mommy and I would be so happy to see her. So Gloria tells Addie a little bit that she can remember about her injury. She's fallen off a ladder and she tells her that she felt something shake the ladder that she thought was completely sturdy. And someone stand over her to make sure she was okay before they ran off. Now, in my mind, I'm inserting scary music here. Because why would someone run off instead of calling for help? And why wouldn't they stay unless they were guilty of something? So Gloria asks, Gloria asks Addie to bring her the book on her nightstand, which is The Secret Garden, um, that they are reading for book club. Addie knows exactly where it is. She knows what page she was on because Mar she and Martha had already been in Gloria's home right after she was admitted to the hospital so that Martha could put together a suitcase for her and she could pick up all of um, Pippi's um, necessity items, like her toys, her bed, her food, her treats, etc. But when she goes back to the house, the book isn't there. So she goes back to the hospital and they search through Martha's luggage, just glorious luggage, just in case Martha just randomly decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put it in her, her luggage um, in case she has a longer stay and it'll give her something to um, concentrate on. Addie goes to the police station where Martha and Paige are now being held, as well as Ken, and asks to speak with Martha, which of course they can't do because she's a suspect. Um, Addie 
bags are really temperamental. Former female FBI agent named Riley to ask Martha if she picked up the book and happened to just take it home, um, thinking that she would take it to Gloria later. When she comes back and relays that it was she left it in Gloria's house, Addie informs the police officer that there's a problem. Because that book is a first edition and was worth at her estimate without being able to evaluate it further, $25,000. I can't imagine owning a book valued that much. So, you know, that's really a lot of money for a book to be worth. First edition, in good shape, binding isn't falling apart. Do we now have a motive for why Gloria has, fought, has been injured? Was somebody trying to injure her, um, maybe to get her keys? To get, maybe they're trying to send a message? We don't know. So after basically begging and pleading with Riley to investigate into this, the police officer makes a decision to check to see if anything is really wrong. Because she knows in her head, if something actually isn't right and... Addie has reported this and bugged her about it, and she has not taken the proper steps to actually investigate it. She's going to be in a lot of trouble. So she sends out Carolyn, who is a police officer on desk duty, who is eight, eight months plus pregnant. But she sends Addie along just in case, so nothing happens. <laughs> because all the other police officers are busy dealing with a a murder and the ice carving competition and everything else going on. There's really no one left to do to call on except the lady at the front desk who really shouldn't have been out in the first place, but it's a book and everything was okay. After they do a walkthrough of the house, Carolyn, who is a police officer, asks Addie if there's anything different than when she left on Friday. Now that she knows there's something wrong, has her mind picked up on anything? And she goes, one thing. There was a photo album on the coffee table. When she left on Friday, it was open. When they came in, it was closed. And she knows this for a fact because when she was there earlier to get the book for Gloria, she had let Pippi out and sat down and opened the photo album to look through it. She knows this for a fact. So that evening... After she gets home, because Pippi's very tired, and she has her she has her little stuffed bear Baxter, and she just wants to go to sleep. So she, Addie takes big rolls of craft paper or butcher paper and unrolls it onto her wall, tapes it up, and starts making lists. Murder, book. Because in her mind, they are currently two separate things. After a little while... Simon comes by. He is just exhausted after his day at work. He falls asleep on her couch. The next morning, as they're getting breakfast and talking, he gets a phone call from Mark. They have found something inside of Martha's bakery. Addie drives down, but she can't find a parking spot, so she parks further down from her shop. And when she walks up, the sign is open, and she knows that she turned it to close before she left. She walks in, and Paige is working. Paige is worried that she no longer has a job, but Addie dispels that ASAP um, and, so, and Paige informs her that because she wasn't at home, um, that people vouched for her that she had no involvement in the murder of um, Emma's father. So also in the course of this, Paige has revealed some very personal information about her involvement with Brett Palmer and who exactly he is to her and Emma. And it just sends Addie for a spin. She had no idea. Paige is such a person, keeps all that personal information to herself. She's not really to like spread the information about herself around. So Addie felt very, very honored that Paige has finally given a little bit of information about herself. When Paige broaches the topic of redecorating the windows as something, you know, her brain is just spinning. Her mom's in jail. Her estranged father's in jail. Her, the, fa the father of her daughter has been murdered. Her brain is just in a tailspin. So you know her mind is trying to just focus on something so that she just doesn't completely lose it. 
she has the idea of decorating in a secret garden theme, which is the topic, the book that their book club is reading. She says they have a lot of copies that they could sell as well. She also says, hey, I can get the cop, my first, my book back from Gloria and we can use it in the display. Addie then has to tell her about her missing book. And she, Paige is like, well, that's fine. I was going to pop, things happen. Um, I was going to give it to Emma someday, but whatever. And then Addie tells her, no, you don't understand. This was a first edition and just looking at it, it's worth $25,000. And that, Paige is like, what the heck? And immediately she goes, Ken did it. She automatically says, I know, you know, it. he didn't leave it to me as an inheritance. He left it knowing that one day he was going to come back and claim it. So Paige has decided that they're going, they, Paige and Addie are going to go with the secret garden theme. So Paige is in the back of the shop getting things for the new display. Addie takes a new copy of the secret garden to Gloria so that while it's not the book she had started on, she knows where she's at in the book and can continue reading from there. Um, Gloria proceeds to inform her that the, that she's been reading the paper and she now knows who the person was that, that checked on her to make sure she was okay. Well, let's complicate things and it's Brett Palmer. As Gloria then has to be informed by Addie everything going on and why Martha hasn't been by to to visit um Gloria's like well let's solve a mystery she reminded me of a female version of Fred from Scooby-Doo she's like let's get going and, you know you know those those little old ladies that just keep going like a thousand miles a minute and you're going how can I keep up with you yeah that's how I picture Gloria in my head this just this older lady with this just you know bundles of energy when Addie starts asking questions about who has the key to Gloria's home and explains why she wants to know Gloria actually comes up with the same answer as Paige that Ken took the first edition that he had left with her when he left Paige and Martha all those years ago. So, do you want to know who the murderer is and who took the book? Well, you know I'm not going to tell you here. You know that you're going to have to go pick up a page for murder, which is available today from uh, Lauren Elliott. Like I said, this is book number five in the series. If you really enjoy the book, I really suggest that you go back and start from the beginning and then read them all through and then read number five again. So again, thank you so much to um, the publisher, to netgallery.com and the author Lauren Elliott for the opportunity to read and review this book. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.